This is KGW News at 11. We begin tonight with the latest on COVID-19. Washington has reported a second death from the virus. The victim is a man from the Seattle area. He had underlying health conditions and was in his 70s. He was being treated at the same hospital in Kirkland where the first U.S. coronavirus death was reported. That first victim was a man in his 50s who also had underlying health conditions. Washington health officials say right now there are 13 presumptively positive cases of COVID-19 in the state. Six of those cases are connected to a life care center, a nursing facility in Kirkland. More than 50 others from that facility are showing symptoms and are undergoing testing. In all, 231 people in the state are being monitored for the virus. In Oregon, a second person has tested presumptive positive for the virus. State health officials say this new case is connected to the first one in Lake Oswego. They're calling the person a household contact of the Forest Hills Elementary employee who tested presumptive positive. Now, the relationship between the two isn't quite clear, and health officials said they couldn't provide more information. The good news, though, that person seems to be doing all right. They didn't have to be hospitalized and are recovering in isolation at home. Another 86 people are being monitored for the virus. And you're probably hearing that phrase presumptive positive a lot. Well, testing for COVID-19 is two tiered. The first test is done by a state public health lab, a presumptive test. The second test to confirm is done by the CDC. And if you did any shopping this weekend, you probably noticed some long lines and very empty shelves. A lot of people are worried about the coronavirus and they're stocking up. These are photos from the Fred Meyer in the Hollywood district. They were selling out of things like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes and soap, and people were buying up a lot of bottled water. Still, some of you are probably thinking COVID-19, not a big deal. So we want to know how has the news of more cases in our area changed your daily routine? Are you staying home, stocking up on food and supplies? Chime in on our poll. It's happening right now. Just go to KGW.com slash vote. Now, the spread of coronavirus is having a drastic impact on the daily lives of tens of millions overseas. Today, the busiest museum in the world suddenly closed. It's more evidence of the effect of the virus on sports, commerce and culture. Bill Neely reports from hard hit Italy. The world's most visited museum, the Louvre in Paris, shut down because of the world's most contagious virus. Staff afraid, thousands locked out and worried. Just, I'm going to try to stay healthy and happy and live my life. <laughs> from the World Health Organization today, more aggressive advice than from U.S. officials advising anyone over 60 or with underlying conditions, that's hundreds of millions globally, to avoid crowded areas. We need to prepare for a potential pandemic. Day by day, we see the window of opportunity closing. In South Korea, another huge surge of infections. The entire population urged to stay home. The capital's mayor leveling murder charges at the leader of a religious sect where the country's epidemic began. Two thirds of its cases traced to this group. With Americans now being officially warned to stay away from hot spots like South Korea and here in Milan, multiple airlines, including American, are now abandoning lucrative routes. The Pope cancelling more events. He coughed and sneezed, praying in Rome today. The Vatican say he has a cold, not the virus. Italy's infection rate jumped 50% today. More than 1,600 cases, 34 dead. An Italian tourist in the Dominican Republic, the first person infected in the Caribbean. Australia and Thailand reporting their first deaths. Bill Neely, NBC News, Milan, Italy. Okay, so hundreds of you have been texting us here at KGW throughout the weekend with your questions about the coronavirus. And this is a question we're seeing a lot. Should I cancel travel plans? Well, 
that depends. Right now, if you're traveling within the U.S., the Centers for Disease Control says you do not need to cancel your trip. If you're traveling outside of the U.S., however, you're going to have to check your destination and to see if that has a travel notice. Now, there are various travel notice levels based on health risk. Warning level three is the most serious, telling travelers to avoid all non-essential travel. Right now, that's for China, Iran, South Korea, and Italy. Then there's alert level two. This is for high risk groups like older adults or those with chronic medical conditions. You're recommended to postpone plans to level two countries. And right now, that is Japan. Finally, there's watch level one. And this means the risk is low. Travelers shouldn't put off or cancel plans, but they should be taking health precautions. The only destination at level one right now is Hong Kong. And the CDC also wants to remind travelers that the risk of getting COVID-19 on an airplane is low. And that's because air is filtered and circulates on planes, making it harder for germs to spread. And we have a link to all of the CDC's current travel notices for you at KGW.com. We want you to keep those questions coming, too. It's easy. All you have to do is text us here at 503-226-5111. And because there's no vaccine for COVID-19, your best defense against the virus is prevention. And that starts with washing your hands a lot. The CDC says it's one of the best ways to protect you and your family from getting sick. Use warm, soapy water and wash for at least 20 seconds. I sing happy birthday and that usually does the trick. If you don't have soap and water, they suggest using a hand sanitizer that is at least 60% alcohol. And let's take a look at our poll tonight. We've been asking you if you've changed your daily routine as the coronavirus spreads. Right now, the majority of you, 64% saying no, but 20% still saying somewhat. And we'll continue to cover the coronavirus situation as it develops. Just go to kgw.com slash vote, or you can download the KGW app. It's just kind of like the ocean itself. You just have to ride the waves. There's, I have really really, really bad days where I can't do anything and I'm a puddle on the floor and then other days I can function. Jamie Stiles, the mother of the two children tragically swept out to sea on the Oregon coast, spoke with us today as friends and family gathered for a celebration of life. Lindsay Nadrich was at the memorial. And it just feels like a battle almost every day, like I have to have a battle plan. For getting through and some days are easier than others um, but it's just a club I never wanted to join. There's no way to be prepared for what happened that January weekend to the Stiles family. Jamie, Jeremy and their two kids, seven-year-old Lola and four-year-old William, were at the Oregon coast with friends when tragedy struck. We've been to the beach hundreds of times and thought we knew everything we needed to know. That Saturday, Jamie says she and her mom went shopping while Jeremy and the two kids went for a walk. They were on an off beach trail when a sneaker wave swept them out to sea. Jeremy survived, but the kids did not. He's doing better. It was hard for him. Um, he was there. He almost died. Um, so it's been really tough for him. He, I can only imagine what the scene was like, but he was in it and um, he struggles with like not being able to be the hero that he wanted to be in that moment for the kids. Their whole world forever changed in an instant. It's just out of order deaths are especially tragic ones that happen. And you just ate breakfast with your kids and then they're gone when you come back. It still feels surreal for everyone that Lola and William are gone. Many tears and stories were shared as dozens gathered to celebrate their lives Sunday afternoon. They were just the most loving, fun, crazy in the best way children that were so kind of beyond this earth. Jamie says the grief will always be with her, but the support they've received from everyone has been a huge help. She says strangers will stop to give her hugs. Others have delivered food, donated, and sent messages of love and encouragement. Yeah. Just thank you for the support and the messages. I promise I read them all. <laughs> and I uh, 
burn out phone batteries trying to respond to everybody um, on a daily basis and and I will get there I, I really do want to say thank you for people who took time out of their day to send me something or um, just wish our family well. Vestal Elementary, where Lola went to school, is now raising money to build an all-inclusive playground they plan to dedicate to the kids. If you want to donate, we'll post more information on KGW.com. I'm Lindsay Nadrich, KGW News. Thank you, Lindsay. And it was an evening of shared hugs, tears, and stories. Dozens gathered at Clark College to celebrate the life of Nikki Kuhnhausen. The 17-year-old from Vancouver disappeared in June. Her remains were found in December. David Bogdanov was charged with her murder. He's accused of killing Nikki after finding out she was transgender. Tonight, friends and family shared their favorite memories. I remember when I was about seven, she was left babysitting me and we were told to clean the kitchen. <laughs> and when it was time to mop, we used too much water. So the whole floor was covered in soap and water. So she told me to go put my bathing suit on and, <laughs> and we used the kitchen as a slip and slide until our parents got home. Earlier this week, Washington lawmakers approved the Nikki Kuhnhausen Act. It would be ban a legal defense that argues the use of force against an LGBTQ person is justified. That bill now goes to Governor Jay Inslee to sign. New developments in the search for Allison Watterson. The 20-year-old from North Plains went missing shortly before Christmas. Yesterday, some of her belongings were found near Pumpkin Ridge Road, where she was last seen with her boyfriend. Washington County Sheriff's deputies searched the area, but nothing else was found. Misty Watterson, Allison's mom, says the new discovery gives her more hope. It's the first sign of anything in 10 weeks. She's been missing 10 weeks today. Um, so. You know, it was like getting hit with a ton of bricks for sure, you know, because we're out there searching constantly and we're just not finding anything. So. Misty says awareness is the key to bring her daughter home safe and she'll continue searching for her. An alert tonight for your Monday commute. Today, TriMet shut down three MAC stations that run through downtown Portland. Those include the Mall Southwest 4th Avenue stop on Yam Hill and the Mall Southwest 5th Avenue station on Morrison. And up near Providence Park, the Kings Hill Southwest Salmon Station will also be closed, but that closure might only last a year. TriMet says those three stations don't see too many riders, and closing them will cut travel times.